return to a galaxy far, far away. The Empire Strikes Back! An exciting adventure featuring one of the greatest movie villains of all time, Darth Vader. You may know this Sith Lord for his deep, powerful voice provided by James Earl Jones, but who is the man inside of the costume? And how did he become part of one of the biggest feuds in the history of film? The year is 1976. Young director George Lucas is in need of some tall actors to play large roles in his low-budget sci-fi movie. He ends up contacting two very tall men to try out for the roles of Chewbacca, the lovable Wookiee sidekick, and Darth Vader, the ominous villain of the film. David Prowse was one of George's favorite choices after he had seen him in Stanley Kubrick's classic, A Clockwork Orange. After Peter Mayhew chose the role as the Wookiee co-pilot, Prowse was left with only one option, which just so happened to be his preferred choice anyway, the main villain of the movie. Lucas was happy to have the actors sorted out and out of the way for the time being. At this point, everyone was happy with each other. Lucas was ambitious and full of energy, and the actors were excited to start filming. Production was underway. Over the course of the following year, George Lucas would deal with ridicule from friends, prop and special effects malfunctions, and severe anxiety, causing him to almost have a heart attack on set. His doctor ordered him to stay home to rest, or he may die while making his biggest dream. There was very little hope for Lucas's precious project that he had worked on for three years. 20th Century Fox was ready to pull the plug. But they came through. Nineteen seventy seven. The actors are prepared to watch the problematic and migraine inducing movie that they had all participated in. Once the film finished, everyone was overwhelmed with the surprising outcome. Everyone, that is, except for Darth Vader himself. George Lucas never informed David Prowse that his voice wouldn't be included in the final cut. I'm tearing this ship apart piece by piece until you found those tapes. Find the passengers of this vessel. I want them alive! I'm a member of the Imperial Senate on a diplomatic... You mission. are part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. Take her away. Prowse had acted on set under the impression that his vocal performance would be in the actual movie. However, George had always planned to use the voice of James Earl Jones, who provided a more powerful vocal performance. This led to the first of many conflicts between Prowse and Lucas. I think George really wanted an obvious black voice, and they got James Earl Jones in to do it. And to me, it, that is a very, a very obvious Negro voice. And uh, anyway, it's, it's a nice combination, I think. I mean, it's, it's frustrating for me, obviously, yeah. because, you know, I'm not I having imagine. it. When Star Wars proved itself to be a great success, Lucas got to work on the sequel. David Prowse reprised his role as Darth Vader in The Empire Strikes Back, but was still bitter with George for not telling him about Vader's voice. Knowing this time around that his on-set dialogue would not make the final cut, Prowse decided to have fun with the recording process, switching out his lines with something so ridiculous he would often make his co-stars burst out laughing, even in serious situations. Prowse's antics on set, as well as many racist, sexist, and bigoted remarks during filming, got him on Lucas's bad side. The executive producer of Episode 5 found Prowse to be so annoying and unbearable that he would avoid him at all costs. When it came time to film one of the biggest twists in cinematic history, revealing Vader as Luke's father, Prowse was kept in the dark, with only director Irving Kirshner, George Lucas, and Mark Hamill knowing about the secret ending. They provided Prowse with a faux script, having him read dialogue that didn't really relate to the scene. In fact, even Mark Hamill only knew about the real twist minutes before filming. Once production wrapped up, Lucas thought that his ordeals with Dave Prowse were over. When Prowse heard that he had once again been lied to about his true role in the series, he felt even more betrayed. In interviews, he started to talk poorly about his experiences, especially when dealing with George Lucas. Come time of Return of the Jedi, George Lucas was getting along with very few people. 
He was becoming more focused on the money than on the film, doing whatever he could to sell action figures and merchandise. David Prowse felt more and more neglected, with Lucas doing his best to avoid Dave constantly. One day during filming on the set of Return of the Jedi, a film crew got set up in a secluded and closed off stage to film the iconic ending of the film, the unmasking of Darth Vader. But when we see Anakin's face finally revealed, it isn't David Prowse behind the mask. I'll not leave you here, I've got to save you. You already have Luke. George Lucas never told Prowse that they were filming the scene without him, and the stagehands all had to guard the doors to make sure no one entered. Production on episode 6 was wrapping up, and everyone was finally ready to say goodbye to the Star Wars trilogy. That was before the dreaded interview. A few months before the release of the movie, news broke that someone had leaked the twist ending to the film. Lucas immediately put the blame on Prowse. Truly believing that Vader himself was the one who ruined the surprise, he officially cut all ties with David Prowse. The splitting of the relationship was terrible for Prowse, getting him banned from all authorized Lucasfilm Star Wars events. Lucasfilm tells David Prowse that he's burnt all of the bridges between them, and will never be able to remedy his faults. Prowse still claims that he never gave away the information about the climax of the movie. He will never be allowed to attend any Star Wars conventions or events. It seems that this may be the end of the reign of Darth Vader. From being one of the most iconic movie villains of all time, to becoming a man banned from the one thing that brought him true fame, George Lucas still despises Prowse, and that probably won't change anytime soon. The Dark Lord of the Sith never got the respect he deserved, but now that he's been unmasked, he can finally be recognized as the true man beneath the helmet. So now you know what happens behind the mask and beyond the stars. This has been the feud between Prowse and Lucas. Hi there. Uh oh, this looks dangerous. Will they see that car? Think I better have a word with those two. That wasn't very clever, was it? If you'd been looking and listening all the way across, that wouldn't have happened. That's better. Remember, always use the Green Cross code, because I won't be there when you cross the road.